Hey guys, it's Pet and Plum here from the Seacaps, and in today's video, guys, I've got an updated tutorial for you on basically how you can, you know, create a public Feed the Beast server with your friends, you know, so you can play with your friends without any kind of port forwarding, none of that jazz, just a really simple, easy Feed the Beast server. So this is an updated tutorial on one I did before, so I just thought I'd clarify a few things I didn't clarify in the previous video. So first things first, you want to go to the Feed the Beast website. Now, it's very tempting to click this download now button, but I believe this, this will take you to the, you know, new cursed launcher. Now, the problem with that is there's no way to download a server on it. At least as far as I'm aware. Um, this, I'm going, this is knowledge that I've got, you know, that's about two years old. They may have changed it, but as far as I'm aware, you can't actually download servers from the cursed launcher. So you want to click the legacy Windows button, it's basically going to download the Feed the Beast la launcher for you. So we already have it on the desktop, so I'm just going to, you know, go ahead and launch the FDB launcher now. And what you're going to do is basically pick whichever pack you want. So it can either be a third party pack if you really want. You know, there's like servers available for that if you want to go and play any of these with your friends. But the one I'm going to be picking is the mod pack I use quite regularly for my Quest for Plum Lab series. And that's the Feed the Beast Dial 21.12 pack. So you want to click download server and it's going to take you to a direct link where it's going to you know start downloading the pack for you. So you want to click uh, cancel. Now you are going to need some sort of zip extracting software. I, I believe you may be able to do it with Windows, but I just prefer to do it with WinRAR. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for this if you guys want to check it out. And you want to get all the files and you want to basically move it into some sort of empty folder. I mean, you could put them on your desktop if you really want, but it'll just make a massive mess. So I prefer to you know, just keep them in a separate folder. So first, next, once you've extracted all the files, you're going to click on the FTB install EOX, uh, not EXE, the uh, batch file. And this is just basically, you know, going to go through and tie up all the loose ends and make sure all the FTB content's installed. So it shouldn't, you know, the time may vary depending on the speed of your computer. I mean, mine's pretty quick, I want to say, so it's not going to take too long. And next you want to hit the server start um, button. So once you've hit the server start, it's going to pretty much crash out within a few seconds, really, because you need to go open the EULA, the end user li license agreement, and change this value to true. And you just want to quickly save that. And you want to re-click uh, the server start button. Now this is you know, going to probably take the longest. It's going to be the longest part of the um, tutorial really. It's just basically going to be waiting for this guy to finish. But it shouldn't take too long. And one thing I should probably point out is you're probably going to get a Java pop-up coming up here at some point. And it's just going to basically, not a Java pop-up. Um, well, in fact, I think it is Java actually. Well, it's like a Windows file will pop-up basically saying you need to um, allow this to basically run through your firewall otherwise if you block it it will then um, you know you won't be able to have your server public to your friends or anything so presumably you're on a private network so just uncheck the public box which I believe for some reasons by default and change that to the uh, private networks so while this is loading up I figured I might as well move on to the next part of the tutorial and you want to download a piece of software called ng rock now I'll leave a link to this in the, in the description below. You are going to need to create a quick a quick account for it, but you can either you quickly do it through Facebook or Google Play if you really want to. And you want to download the piece of software, and it's going to come in a little zip file. And you'll just open it with WinRAR again, and you want to just get rid get this uh, exe file out of the zip. So I'm going to keep this uh, ng rock guy up there. And I believe, is the server done? No, so the server's not quite done yet. So I'm going to wait for the server to finish setting up and I'll break it back. Okay, so the server's finished setting up. You, the, uh, what, what text you have here may vary ever so slightly. But all you're going to do is just basically type uh, stop on the command line. If you get anything else popping up, just get rid of it and just make sure stop is the only thing on the command line. So now what you want to do is basically um, you know, press any key to continue. And this is where the making it public bit happens. So currently this is basically only a private server, you know, I've not put forward on my internet or anything, so that I'm any only the people that are on my internet can actually connect to this. So what you're gonna do is basically drag your ng rock application into the folder. And basically what you're gonna have to do is I, I've actually registered my ng rock token, but basically what you have to do is to basically prove that you verified an account. This is basically just to differentiate differentiate between the people who have premium accounts and free accounts. But you can still do everything you need to do on a free account anyway, so there's no need to worry. I'm gonna have to blur this out so you guys can't see this, but you basically have an individualized token uh, on your for your account basically. So what you want to do is you basically want to copy and paste this, so you want to get the ng rock auth token 
and then you want to copy it. This is just going to be your personalized auth token, and you want to copy that into the ng rock, and it should then say auth token saved to configuration file, blah, 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 blah. Now, once you put your token in, there's going to be a little bit of text I'm basically going to put in the, in the description box that you want to copy in. So you basically just want to copy this, so it's ngrock tcp25565, then a space, two uh, dashes, and then this is the bit where it changes. So if you're in the in the EU, in the um, EU, sorry, you need to then, you know, put put the region EU bit. If you're in sort of like Northern America, you don't need to worry about putting that in. So next thing, you want to basically hit enter, and you're basically going to be given uh, this window basically. So once this window is up and running, you know you're basically in business. So this window, you're basically going to uh, you know do this ng rock thing every time you start your server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the servers set up, I'm going to FTB client set up, and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so once your Minecraft server is all up and running, basically what you're going to want to do is go to the multiplayer option. And see how, when I say that, I basically mean so once you've got the, you know, the servers up and running, the um, ng rock windows up and running, go to add server, and I'm just going to say call it my server. And you basically want to go to the ng rock window, and you're going to see this number here. And what you're going to do is basically ignore the TCP, um, and then the double slashes and stuff. And you're just going to basically copy everything from zero dot onwards all the way up to that last number, and basically control V that into your server address. So hopefully, if everything's up and running, your server should basically be like this. You should see my Minecraft server, and yeah, you want to click join server, and hopefully everything should work. So the good thing is with this me method of doing it is, with, with, unlike using something like local host to connect to your server, if you can connect to the ng rock, that means anyone else can connect to your ng rock because you're basically all connecting through the same uh, way, basically. So as you can see, my Minecraft server's all up and running. Obviously, I've got this fax texture pack on for my uh, FTB Let's Play. But as you can see, everything's up and running, guys. I'm, I'm on the Minecraft server. So, for example, if I try and say type game mode. See, for example, so you, you know, don't have permission to this command because I'm not opt or anything. But yeah, so that's how to create a Feed the Beast Minecraft server, guys. So thank you for watching, guys. Hope you have enjoyed this video. Goodbye from Prison Plum. Built up.